you're listening to Cinema Red Pill. I'm Sharon and I'm with Nick and Mark. Say hi. Hello. Something. Okay. Your presence and Nick. Hey, I'm Nick. Okay. So uh, today we're going to talk about animated movies because Mark is involved in, anima- in animation. So first talk about that actually. Yeah, I do dominantly to the animation work. Mm-hmm. I have been working on some pieces. Mm-hmm. I did also some illustration work, character design. Yeah. Right. So now I currently work at Samaritan Multimedia. We do branding mainly. Uh, so we haven't been doing quite a significant, a significant amount of animation, but by, but taught to uh, the animation uh, prior to this. Uh, I guess after this podcast, life went out. I am hoping to do more animation. Preferably 2D and take a look at uh, stop motion because oh. yeah, you know, not worried about the, 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 the workload. So, and no one's doing stop motion currently, at least I haven't seen any Ugandan stop motion pieces. Uh, Doesn't stop motion take ages to do? Yeah, it does. So, does so does 2D if you decide to you know illustrate it frame by frame, it can be it can be fairly cumbersome. Why don't uh, you want to use CG? 3D, 3D animation. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, with 3D animation, I feel like you either it ha- it doesn't have that middle ground where it can have a good story and then you have the work in 3D. Uh, it sold a lot on visuals. So with 3D animation, you either go all out or don't touch it. So if you don't, uh, I, at least I've always felt that if you can't go the whole nine yards, don't even, don't even, I don't even start. Because right? I feel like if you are with 3D animation, there is no middle ground, there's no in between there. Even when you have a really good story, uh, bad texturing, bad lighting can stop people from just following the story. Because now they watch 3D animation work these days, everyone watches it for the visuals. A lot of the times it's carried by the visuals, so people take a look at it and they're hoping to see. Like really mind-blowing visuals. They want to see those, that eye twitch. That's that's very good. That looks so realistic. They want to see that face, that facial expression that kills, that makes you laugh. So I tend to avoid it because if you end up with work that's in the middle ground there, especially if you're going to do character work, it doesn't look as appealing. So with 2D animation, I found I found that you can have a really good story, and if you're willing to put in the work, because the workload is is significant but then you don't need a fa- you don't really need for a lot of 2 animation work you don't really need a fancy computer you don't really need even the software itself is not the most is fairly user friendly right you find a lot of 2d animation software that is very very user friendly provided you can draw you just hit the ground running right away you'll be able to do very good work provided you can draw Right. Even when you can't, even when you're that good at drawing, you can draw a basic character. I mean, you've seen a lot of the characters on TV. Some people have very good work where it's a character with not more than 20 lines. Right. In total, it's like circles for the eyes, a dot. I mean, everyone can do that. And maybe even a circular head, also, not very complex. Yeah, so. Okay. What's your uneducated opinion on animated movies? Well. Uh, I'm a software engineer, so th- from this perspective, I only perf- um, perceive this world, the animated world, from uh, the logistic, the practical aspect. And Kakura has already expanded a lot on that. The thing is, from a graphical perspective, it's a lot easier for a guy who's untalented, like myself or many others out there, to attack this from a 3D angle because there's a lot more software, a lot more material on the internet that's already freely available to do this kind of thing. From 2D, it's going to end up looking like a flash. Flash, is that what they call it? Right, the flash animation. It yeah. Mean, it's like that's, a puppet. It's, it's, it's like a puppet. And not like it's only very badly puppeted. Eh? Very badly puppeted. You can do a, good, a lot of good work with that. I mean, look at but South Park. But um, yeah, but even in South Park, you can see the story that carries. It's the story that's doing most of the heavy lifting, not the visuals. Whereas, from my field, if you if you attack it like that, 
right now the 3D graphic uh, is unless you pour a lot of money in there, it's going to look bad. It's going to look really bad. It's going to look like, at best, eh, on a low budget, at best. Um, what's it? Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, it's going to look like that, and that doesn't look very, <laughs> very good. No, so you have to make a bit of a compromise. Either way, you have to either pour in a lot of money or let the story do the heavy lifting. Either way, you're going to have to put in work. I mean, even something that looks like it was like it was um, cheap I don't yeah. know not cheap just looks low effortish like yeah. adventure time mm-hmm. <laughs> one episode takes like nine months I was, yeah, read, I was watching a uh, documentary about one episode just one episode yeah, and one episode is like five minutes seven minutes nine months yeah, 24 that. frames per second that's exactly they, go about to they have many and um uh, illustrators so they'll do all the episodes at once different. they do multiple episodes simultaneously yeah. yes then they release the season seven minutes of cartoon nine months they do many of them uh, simultaneously they have storyboard guys they have writers they have animators illustrators all that but it has to take about seven months or so and three countries <laughs> okay so if you're going to go cheap you could do that, but uh, be prepared to let the story carry it. Yeah, okay. it's a compromise. See, like that's one of the things where Philip, some one of the people who has been on the show a lot, because people keep asking Katoto why they don't have a show, mm. and that's why they don't the reason, have a yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, like there's take. just so much that mm. goes into it's it's having something work, yeah. that brief. Mm. True, so true you guys have talked a lot about story and um, and uh, versus quality versus quality, but there's something you've not mentioned: how far they can. And go with the stories and the worlds that they can have like something like paprika did you see paprika yeah, just how far someone can go with the with the story they're telling and show such a different world which would never go like if they were to do that in live action they'll spend like a hundred million on it for sure so i like that about animation really yeah. cool um, speaking of time eh? uh, yeah. there's a podcast i listened to where they talk to writers from different movies so the person of Pixar was who did Moana was talking about how they take a period of five years for each film. And like the 2.5 years are like research and everything, then the rest is, is when it starts. Yeah. But he said the number of, of designers they have are 90 yeah. for that one film. But the whole process is so big and Pixar is so cool because they put so much energy. By the time yeah, you're have, doing five years on a, a, a project, of resource, yes. oh they have my god. Of I just wonder <clears throat> that kind of projection on for a film like that like if it sucks yeah, if they, people if, usually spend at least one year on a film and sometimes it sucks sometimes it doesn't five years is a lot of time five years is enough time for it to commit any studio if they tell you 30 million dollars because 30 million dollars would be most companies net worth over 20 years mm. they probably so they can pay for it they yeah, have they, they have deep pockets yeah, it, guys. it they, makes they it they very feasible it. Mark, yeah. do you have any any picks for like uh, animated stuff you've seen around either Uganda or like Africa. Africa. Uh. Kiriku and the Sorcerer. Did you as any of you seen Kiriku no. and the Sorcerer? No. I, I think I Sosara. have it on my drive. Take okay. a look at Kiriku and the Sorcerer. It is brilliant. It's puppeted, mm-hmm. but the story is, is it's a very nice African story. Eh? It is brilliant. The animation is also not all all that. They didn't go all out on the animation, but mm-hmm. the story, the, the execution, as far as finished work goes. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed. Mm. All right, I was as far as the story carried it, mm. and as far as finished work went, it was very good work. Super Strikers is from where? Super South Strikers African. was South African. They, it was a TV show. Also. Yeah, now yes. it's now actually it's a TV South show South that South runs on Disney. Disney? As, Disney? Uh, Disney? Yeah, Disney XD. Yeah. Super Strikers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's running on Disney right now. XD, even yeah. it's, it's still currently because runs. Because uh, the Disney we get is South African. Eh. Such a it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really bad. It's, it's bad. <laughs> okay. I mean, the comics it's were not. Flash. The flash comics animated. were not all that, but, but the, animation, the animation is even worse. Yeah. Than the horrible comic. Yeah. So. Why are you hating? It's a step the, in the wrong direction. It's just thing. really bad. It's a step in the wrong. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a step in the wrong direction. It's not even me hating on. Yeah. Right 
animated sports. Yeah, I mean, on Disney XD, it's probably <laughs> the worst show. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the worst it's show, very yeah. easily oh the worst. Oh my god, are <laughs> yeah. you serious? It's pretty bad. Yeah. It's bad, and that's the only South African regional programming on yeah. that channel, I think. And it's, and Kiriku was actually was puppeted, but mm. for what they did with that story. Eh? It was really well it was done. Very, it was very well done. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay, I think we've talked enough about animated movies. Now we're going to take our picks. So this episode we're going to be saying our three favorite animated movies. Each of us will have our top three. And Mark, you're going to be the first. Okay. So start with your number three. My number three is... You're deciding from the list right now. Eh? Yes. <laughs> I had originally been told it was five. five but yeah, so now they have to be three. three. <laughs> so, uh, number three would have to be. I have to say Jungle Book. Hey, that's an that's interesting a really pick. good one. I went Jungle uh-huh. Book, yeah. And the, the Milt Carl one, not that's the good. John Favreau not thing. John Favreau, yeah. Of course, yeah. animated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Milt, yeah, I, when you watch it. There are some there's there are some lines which were kind of kind of shabby, but it's part of its charm. It's not terrible. It's not a, it's not done in a bad way. Yes. Yeah, there's only that. But there's also even every once in a while you see one shabby scene. There's that dance scene at um, Louis Castle. Yeah. At at Louis Temple. At yeah. When, with, uh, when he's following be like you. you. Yeah. Uh, so now this is part where they are, where right before Baloo jumps out in drag. Yeah. When he's uh, <laughs> with, the, uh, yeah. with the coconuts and yeah. the, and, the, and the, wow, yeah. yeah, that was the brilliant scene. Singing, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But there is this scene where where this, they do that double step, that two step, mm-hmm. right across that door. Mm-hmm. That animation work was you can tell people are exhausted when yeah. they did that <laughs> one. You can tell the exhaustion There's from also that. Also, recycled work in uh, Jungle Book. Yeah, if, like, you, if you've been watching this. Yeah. Uh-huh, that that winds up like in um, yes. Robin Hood. Yeah. Robin Hood. In they Robin took Baloo. Just oh, as you want. Yeah, yeah, but I thought it was brilliant. So for my number, th- for the third pick is Jungle Book, and yeah. that music, that music was brilliant. Oh, I wanna be like you. I wanna walk like you. She talk like you. True. You see it's true. And they like me. Can't learn to be you. Every was, single score, I loved every single score. score. Even the ones, ever. even the ones I did, even the scores I didn't like as a child. For example, the one for the vultures, I didn't like that as a child. But even Khan, um, the snake. Shia Khan. No, no, not Shia Khan. There was a snake. Ka. Ka. Yes, Ka also had that trust in me score. I didn't like as a child. Eh? Yeah, but as I grew older, ah, oh my I god, they were brilliant. Me. Yeah, yeah. and Side note: they, Those vultures are supposed to be voiced by the Beatles, the Beatles, but they couldn't get them to do it. And King Louis, the orangutan, was supposed to be voiced by um, Armstrong. Uh, uh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, but you know, getting a black guy to do a monkey voice at the time. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the sixties. Yeah, a bit it was a bad time. So, so they got, <laughs> they got another time. jazz le- legend, uh, Louis Prima, instead, and they got Beatles in. Personators to do their vultures. Mm. Mm. So Nick, that was number. That's number your number three. Mm. So someone else going to. Yeah, yeah he's we'll, number three. We'll do round. Mm. Nick, what's your third? Number three is Persepolis. It's a French animation drama. <laughs> drama, extremely mm. dramatic. Black and white. Yeah, it's black mm. and white, mm. and uh, it's two D. It's based mm. on a comic book of the same name mm. by a lady from Iran. Um, mm. It's about her own life. Yeah. She, uh, Marjan Setropi, that's her name. Mm. Anyway, she left Iran as After. a child, not as a child really, more like as a teenager, to go study in Europe for a while. After Atola had taken over? Yes. After uh, Iran had gone through some turmoil and uh, she spent some time over in Europe until she had had enough and came back to France. That's the overview. Mm-hmm. It's just that uh, the details of it, eh? Her description of her own life, um, the turmoil in Iran, as well as this brief background of the politics involved, and uh, what caused her to leave Europe to come back to Iran, uh, and generally it's about her life. It's uh, Iran from the, what is it, 70s? the 70s, yeah. 
viewed from the view of a, a young girl growing up. Why I like Persepolis is uh, the sim- simplicity of it, as well as the way it's authentic. Authentic in the sense that if you read the comics, that's exactly how it looked. Black and white, simple lines, eh? with the very characteristic looks, you know. Uh, comedic, it's extremely simple. The background has this green on it, like it's done mm. on paper. Yes, right? exactly. So, which is what I was saying about 2D animation, right? Mm. You see, like even with a story that good, if they had... If they had half, if you use the French, half asked it in yeah. 3D animation, <laughs> yeah. you would never have you'd been able to get it. past the first 10 seconds of it. Never. Yeah, you'd have seen it and no. no. But in 2D animation, this one, they have. It worked so well. It worked extremely well. Every character seemed uh, very expressive. It has no it was color. Funny. It, has no it was blue. funny even if the material itself was, it was dark. Extremely dark. It was very dark. The second it reason I liked it. Is because it was dealing with extremely political um, uh, subject matter. Mm. However, the way she dealt with it hmm, was from a humorous perspective. Like she didn't let the political aspect of it overshadow the fact that she's a teenage girl. Mm. So she had the reason she left it. Europe wasn't like because she was an anarchist or something, and she had to go back to Iran to fight the power or something like that. It's no, it's because <laughs> it's because a guy dumped her. <laughs> um, there's a line from it like she survived two wars yeah. in Iran but she couldn't survive an asshole ex <laughs> oh <laughs> and my so she had to God. go back home yeah. the way she dealt with it was really well done it had an emotional impact it had everything you'd want from a movie it was actually nominated for an Oscar yeah. Yeah. it lost to, to Ratatouille, Ratatouille. Yeah. but it's an extremely well oh. done movie for the way it's for the way it is, uh, like what Kakuro was describing, uh, it's 2D animation that you think is much cheaper than Hollywood. It's doable, but yeah, it's, it's really doable. Even here now, it would still it's be extremely doable. executable. Mm. But uh, it, it's still amazing. If you amazing. have the time, yeah. If you have the time, you can. If you have the time it, and, and the commitment, you, 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 you could pull it off. Damn. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so on yeah. my it's on my blind spot list, Persepolis. list. <laughs> take it, take it out. Uh, I'll so have to see it. Uh, no my side. number three, I think, is the most recent film among all of our picks. It's Inside Out. I love Inside Out so much, especially the emotions, joy and sadness. Sadness was my favorite character by a mile. And I enjoy the film's message, which is just let, like, sadness has to be. Your child will be sad and you should be okay with it. Like, you should deal with it's the emotion. Yeah. yeah, and the concept is so cool and the whole... Uh, what are those islands she had? Like emotional milestone islands, that kind of. Sa- they had a name, something islands, like the the islands and the things you forget, like the running joke of how you forget phone numbers. And so there's little men saying, "Oh, they're all in your phone. Forget it." Like they just <laughs> make it. <laughs> everything was just so cool. But the way, uh, the, the, what I liked from that gag was the ad. It came. Oh, it yes. was constantly there. Yeah, like, con- let's keep bringing that back. The memory guys are like, remember that ad from like when she was two? Let's bring that back. Let's forget her mom's phone number, but let's bring that ad back right now. Yeah, that was funny. So that's my number three. On to our number two. What's your number two, Mark? My number two. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Ooh, nice. That's extremely good. That's I, am, I am a huge Wes Anderson fan. What he does the, mainly with the with the color palette eh, and every his 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 signature his style is so it's so iconic that you can just see it anywhere. It's just it's anything that's West, yeah everything that's Wes Anderson just reeks Wes Anderson. It is Wes Anderson. It's like Tim Burton. It just reeks Wes Anderson. Not anymore. Tim Burton. Not anymore. Yeah, Tim Burton has. I mean, he had like baby eyes, which were uh, big eyes. Sorry. Oh, I fucking hate it. We had Big Eyes, which was the least Tim Burton, Tim Burton yep. movie recently. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Wes Anderson, on average, he has these, these built sets where the color schemes are. He has, he has this, the, a lot of his sets have these color schemes you can't find, you can't almost find in, in real life. Like that hotel, you see that we've seen the Grand Budapest. Mm-hmm. You have this color scheme where if it's red, it's red. Very pastel. Yeah, it's very, it's this saturated red or this saturated purple. You can't 
find in real life. So within the same like kind of gradient. Then he shoots. Yeah. Then when he decides he wants to, if he, if he wants something to have like a complementary color scheme, the things that are green are all this saturated green. With a complementary color. And with a complementary yeah, red. red yeah. So you have this complementary, this one thing that's going to stick out in, they all look in a like shade of red. Uh-huh, they all cut. look like painting. And the beauty with it was like. Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox did, I guess, what Grand Budapest also was doing. Every sing, almost every single shot mm-hmm. is screen is is is, is, is screen saver worthy. Movie is fucking amazing. Yeah, you have every, almost every single shot. You can see it's so meticulously planned eh, mm-hmm. that you don't have any scenes where you feel like if I pause, no matter where where it's playing, you just pause it. What you have is a beautiful shot. You pause it, which is a beautiful shot. Now, part of what I liked about Fantastic Mr. Fox is the story. It has this very, it has an adult story without adult. being sad. <laughs> yeah, without being without being a drama. It's not a drama, but it, you cannot say it's for children. Roald Dahl wrote it. It's based on a book by Roald Dahl. Yeah. yeah, it's very adult, right? Mm. So he's like he's, he's he's even the main character is an adult, right? It begins with him talking about his discontent with life <laughs> that comes from him from him living an unfulfilled life. I mean, exactly, he's a fox. Exactly. Yeah, he's a fox, right? and he's so a he, yeah. chicken. Who am I, Kylie? Who? How? What now? Why a fox? Why not a, a horse or a beetle or a bald eagle? I'm saying this more as like existentialism, you know? Who am I? And how can a fox ever be happy without a, uh, you'll forgive the expression, a chicken in its teeth? I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds illegal. Here, put this bandit hat on. Maybe you're a medium. Take it off for a minute. And don't wait around the house. So what he's dealing with is his unfulfilled life. He was a talented thief, and then he winds up in this... He was a very talented thief and winds, winds up in uh, this scenario as a writer, right? He's now writing for yeah, a newspaper. local newspaper, yeah. So he's very discontent with life. So he figures like every middle-aged person who's discontent, every adult discontent with life, you have a radical change. So they, in the first act, you have him move out of the hole into a tree. Because he thought this would make him feel, as he says, less well, poor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he thinks it will make him feel less poor. So he's trying to feel his, his discontentment with something else. So these are very mature things which ideally as yeah. a child would be. This, this animation exactly. would bore you. So yeah. Do you remember his son? His son who was so weird was at school. Yeah. Different. Uh, different. Like <laughs> They illustrate they they, they 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 do this hand signature. The hand thing. gesture, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's different. different. <laughs> it's a recurring joke. It's my uh, uh, this guy is he's really good at that. West Anderson. You see why where, where they used to eat. Yeah. Like they'd be civilized civilized <laughs> human beings, but then when, when they eat they, when they, eat, they just turn into animals, they just <laughs> throw food all over the place. Just for a gag, yeah. Just for a gag. So I watched it and Honestly, I I felt fantastic, Mr. Fox. That's a good movie. Yeah, I can watch that again. Nick, what's your second? My second pick is Akira. I love anime. I know it's forbidden to say on the internet nowadays because saying you're in love with anime is like just admitting you're straight up loser. But are you serious? <laughs> pretty oh, much, yeah. You're watching some variation of porn. Of <laughs> porn, yeah. <laughs> that, that most people don't that, understand. That, that most people don't approve of at all. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but uh, I'm okay because in this scenario I'm in good company. Sorry. Kanye was favorite movie also is Akira so I don't know if that's good company <laughs> I, 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 know, yeah. I don't know if it is but okay anyway back to the movie Akira it's about a bike it's an anime it's from Japan it's about a biker all right name of Tetsuo and uh, his and his biker gang right Tetsu has a friend named name of Akira. They're a biker gang in uh, the near future. We'll say Blade Runner future. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, there's a word for it. Um, it's called. It's not. It's punk. It's techno punk, right? That kind of uh, veneer of lights and. Uh, it's and a dy- dystopian. You know, everything has gone so bad. Yeah. Judge Dread. Judge Dread. Yes. Judge Dread. Yeah, that's another good depiction of. And in fact, most of these movies were influenced by um, Akira. Akira. 
because if if you want any reason to watch Akira, just watch that opening uh, sequence, that set piece. It's amazing when they're in a bike chase with a rival gang. You will never see anything that interesting again. That that bike chase is just it's insane. Anyway, the plot is this bike gang incidentally gets involved with a huge government conspiracy involving these parahumans who can control things with their minds, telepaths. Right? They're telepathic, telekinetic, they're extremely powerful. One of their members has those abilities, name of Tetsuo. All right? uh, so during a bike chase, he gets separated from the group and um, the government takes him up and he, he experiences this change and eventually ends up in a fight with the leader of his bike gang. You'll have to see it to understand. All of this sounds very strange, mm. but that's the point. It's, <laughs> the, it's, it's, ex- it's, ex- it's extremely strange. Just like when you're watching Blade Runner to explain that, okay, this guy is hunting robots, <laughs> but he might be a robot, he might not, uh, but some of these robots might be becoming human. <laughs> it's, it sounds strange. That's the point of the era that we're trying to depict, right? That's, that's just how it is. That's the veneer it gives off. What I loved about this movie since we're talking about animation is the animation it had an essence of atmosphere like if you look around it every sign is very intricately yeah done like every like like if you see a neon light in the background it, all the words are there right if you see a street like anything you know it's those, going to be done well the, the animation was extremely intricate every detail was to the bone uh, I don't know you have to see this movie to understand <laughs> how, how I feel about it. Anyway, that's okay. That's number two. My number two is also anime. Grave of the Fireflies from Studio yeah. Ghibli. Oh, uh, p- people's favorite is usually Spirited, Spirited Away. Away yeah. And Spirited Away is really good. But I preferred Grave of the Fireflies because its subject matter is too deep. Um, so the film is about like, it's set in like World War Two, In World War Two. Japan and it's a time when they're just dropping bombs on them dropping bombs on them so this it's about two two siblings an older boy and a little girl so their father is away in the war and the mom is injured but from war so it starts off with her them trying to save her and carrying her around so it's like just them suffering and trying to live another day I liked when someone described it like Schindler's List, but in anime, it just does anime because the subject matter is so deep and the way they are portraying these characters and the things of war and how everything is going on is happening so effectively, which made it super cool. It's my favorite Studio Ghibli film. I love it, love it, love it. What's your number one? My number one? Because I am very into 2D animation, I love to say Prince of Egypt. There are a lot of movies that I could have put as my number one. Yeah. Because there are a lot of there are things I watched and I actually I love the Bug's Life. The Bug's Life was brilliant. Wait, are we talking yeah. about the Prince of Egypt? Is this mm. the same movie where Mariah Moses. Carey and, and Thingy Moses sang did the theme? <laughs> yes. Moses, they did the theme oh and everything. God. Mariah Carey and did yeah, the theme. The two D animation in that. Eh? If you have even any, if you if you go like two seconds working on one of those on one of those pieces. Eh? In even a regular piece to see how much time they put into that I think after that they decided you know what, no, this is not humane we are done <laughs> to the animation <laughs> right? they, they, they did Pieces and the Frog after that and yeah. um, uh, that to div- uh, even Treasure Planet I think came after yeah, it yeah, Treasure Planet came yeah. after but uh, as far as this went, really eh? to, to that's my, Disney I mean, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. they, 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 they had. I don't do. I, I, I don't do religious films so much. But this one was brilliant, down to the sound. I love the scores. Every single score was brilliant, from a River Lullaby song to take a take a, take a minute and rewatch it, and yeah. it was genuinely beautiful. And it's 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 a drama. I think it was only drama that would have, they'd have put forward that you you genuinely show kids and every parent would definitely show that to their kids because it's it's from the Bible. But yeah. it's a drama. It's yeah. It's essentially a drama. There is no funny scene in it. There's no scene There's in it. Yeah, funny. There is no it's, funny. It's, it's, it's just good. Straight. It's just few good songs mm. and 
true to the Bible. They not put. They not. They do not even add any comic relief in it. There is no funny character in there. The, sa- the, the, quality the story it. is as gory as it was in the Bible, including <laughs> this the, the death of of, of, of the Pharaoh's first kid. Boy. Yeah, yeah, of Pharaoh's kid. Pharaoh's baby. Pharaoh's child yeah. died. But I watched it, and I honestly cannot say one thing about this drama that I didn't like. They did everything, they, even the death of the firstborn son. There was this white like smoke that just would enter a house yeah. and then it would light and, and then they light and then the candle outside would go out, go out and, and then uh, it would move on to the next house and then it sees the blood out and then it moves on to the next house and then they just show like a hand falling then mm. a scream in the house. Those shots were so good. It was uh, fantastic. So that entire, that entire montage for the death of the firstborns very nicely done. Eh? So, uh, what's your number one? Well, my number one is already taken by this guy. It's Jungle Book. But so, if you may, I'll just have some honorable mentions. Yeah, because you've already talked about it. Yeah, go ahead. All right, my number one is already talked about Jungle Book. Um, Chicken Run. Chicken that's, Run. That's a damn good movie. <laughs> I feel like people but, don't talk about it enough. That was, I think, I think it was one of the first um, animated movies to be nominated for an Oscar. In fact, the Oscar category for animated movies was created specifically for Chicken, for chicken Run. Man. Dope. It's, uh, it's, it's good. Please check that out when you get the chance and you'll understand. Um, you. The second one I wanted to talk about... Max and Mary. Yes, is Max and Mary. Max and Mary. Mostly stop motion. Yeah. I feel people don't give Max. this enough chance. Uh, enough of a chance. It. Max and Mary has no dialogue in it. Nice. It purely has a narrator. It's in black it's and white. Black, uh, it's uh, it's it's you should see it. It's in sepia, more like sepia tone. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's about uh, this girl. She's been writing letters. She's a she has she's, a pen pal. She has a pen pal. Who is? Uh, He's a Mongolian. He's uh, he has um, autism. Okay, well, he's, he's much fat older. Guy, and he's, he's a fat he's older guy from New York, and she's from Australia. He has autism, and she's an aspiring writer. She has been writing to him letters. She's he's, she was extremely lonely. You need to see the opening set piece about illustrating how she's lonely and how he he has autism, and how the two. It's just heartbreaking as fuck. Mm-hmm. Even, even think about it right now. It's a nice movie yeah. and wonderfully done with the stop motion, because the emotional manipulation in that, with yeah. the with the range of motion that uh, that uh, the uh, clay figure has, mm. the I characters was, are so I mean, are so roughly done. They are very roughly done. They're also. really rough, yeah. Because mm. now that's if you watch this animation, you cannot say that they put in as much as much. They they did put in effort and time, eh? but it does not have the precision and the clean up eh? that Kubo and the Two Strings or Paranorman has. You see, like yeah. Paranorman, how the hair sways and yeah, all that. Yeah, all the drama. Oh, yeah. Kubo and the Two Strings, the how two the strings special and... effects are. So you, have, you know, you have the like ocean, when when the know? guy's moon dad shows up and the scene is different, it has the light rays and everything. Uh-huh. So now this has much less. This than has all less, that. It's less black of and a drama. It's, it's really straight, straight down. But Max and Mary was brilliant. I can it's, it's it's ex- it's extremely Even I can't, good. I can't, I can't it's imagine I had forgotten good. about it until you <laughs> mentioned it earlier <laughs> on today. It's, 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 it's a, one of those things that just disappeared in the back of my mind. But it was yeah. one of it was. Brilliant. Also, you'll watch it once. You'll You'll never want to see it again because <laughs> it's sad. Jesus Christ! Yeah, it is sad. Yeah, it is sad. It is sad from the beginning. It's, 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 it's just, very it's, sad. it's just really sad. The third thing I wanted to mention is because I haven't mentioned any Disney movies. I feel I feel like an underrated Disney movie is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. That movie is good. People, please watch that movie. Its score is bomb. There's a, there's a song in it called The Bells of the the Bells of Notre Dame, something like that. The visuals, the color, everything about that movie is perfect. It's one of Disney's greater movies. And I'm sure if you're born in the 90s, you've most likely seen it. You've Hunchback probably seen it, yeah. but give it another look yeah. because yeah. that movie is good. And if they're doing these remakes like Beauty and the Beast or whatever, no, Jungle they not, Book. They should not touch. I think they should not touch that. Uh, let Doesn't them try. Bank already have a live action, or am I. Tripping. Well, Hunchback is based on a book, so it may have a live action that's unrelated to that. Yeah. The animation, 
it's just that anyway please see that book it um, the book <laughs> see that movie mm. it's fantastic yeah mm. anyway okay. my top pick is jungle book because i watched that movie 9000 times as a Even child me. i watched i know it word for word as as a person <laughs> that's your number one yeah I feel bad that I didn't have Lion King cuz Lion King is my jungle book like word for word word for word but like I I I I'm I have recency bias for inside out but <laughs> <laughs> uh my number one is Wally Wally is one of my favorite yeah, movies of all time oh, I love fucking Wally and of course if you watch even if you've not watched it you know the first 20 minutes are basically a silent film yeah. and every time I I Professor and I love for Wally. People keep saying I love the first 20 minutes. I didn't yeah, like when they go up when they go up uh-huh. to space. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I still love when they go yeah. up to space. I love what that's when the humor comes in. That's, that's when the humor comes in. Yeah. Yes, that's when it becomes super accessible. Yes, but super accessible. Wally and Eva, oh, so fucking cool. I love dystopian societies, the poor post-apocalyptic world and the garbage thing they, they had going with, on. Was it nine? I also Papa It didn't work nine. nine and it was I terrible. It didn't work. As in the movie nine. Yes, you ah, didn't see that. I've not you seen nine. It. Yeah, it was like puppets. Yeah. When I say puppets, I don't mean literal puppets. No. Uh, it was animated, but it was about like this kind of. That these were tiny machines, a man machine man. puppet mm. things that some uh, uh, scientist built, right, just to preserve humanity. So he put part of his personality into these each of them nine and there were nine of them yeah, yeah. so he built them then the world goes into war and then only and they, humans go um, and he leaves die. these tiny puppets that he left behind yeah yeah they're just like pieces of human personality so they're supposed to be hey it's like Wally but what <laughs> <laughs> it's like Wally but actually but sad just really bad <laughs> yeah and that, that was that was Flop, but the art on it was like Rango. It was not something you've seen oh, oh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Rango too. Rango. yeah it so had this beautiful cool. art you've not seen everywhere. But yeah. see, like Rango, Rango has this 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 character design that is amazing. Those characters are not; they don't have that baby face mm. that Disney goes for. Yeah, they those. don't have. They have that rough texture. They mm. don't have those. Or DreamWorks. DreamWorks. <laughs> Dreamworks tries to they have those desaturated it, colors not so much I think Dreamworks project. must spend like nine months on their projects they look they have no soul the way they look is not as good they, have, they as spend as much money I mean Dreamworks is a slow bus company it's the just stories, the stories the are not stories the stories suck, suck. Yeah. Mm, they're not, they're not they really suck when Disney <laughs> does a story I mean, like, it's like comparing God. Shark Tale to Nemo finding Nemo Jesus Christ, man! No, but gosh, those what, people. One is extraordinarily emotional. The other is Will Smith in a shark. Yeah, or and some Jamaican DJs. And some Jamaican DJs. Come to find that Wall E, Madagascar <laughs> to what else? Anything. <laughs> I mean, yes. Madagascar to Toy Story. Have you seen Toy Story? One, Andy's. two, and three were all amazing. Yeah, I mean, Andy's transition to growing up and. It just keeps getting more and more depressing. Anyway. Okay, I think we're done. Mark, thank you. Nick, thank you. This has been an episode <laughs> on animated movies. <laughs>